Join us as we disrupt the global real estate industry, revolutionizing the future of property investment and ownership. The world has changed. Future without boundaries is just around the corner. The way we live today can become obsolete tomorrow. A whole new dimension driven by the evolution of AI and virtual reality. Are you ready for the inevitable? From meme to utility, Floki has it all. NFT metaverse game called Valhalla. Floki University, DeFi, charity, and shopping. Floki is governed by the people, for the people. Floki, together, there is no stopping us. Good afternoon, everyone. BC Richfield here, coming to you live from London, back in the office and firing on all cylinders. Huge shout out to everybody joining the stream today, live. You can see we've got about 120, 130 people just popping into there, plus everyone on YouTube and Instagram, which is awesome to see. A big shout out this morning to Yago, who slipped back in, thought he was late, but actually wins for the first person in the chat room. Jimmy, our legendary NLP coach and incredible trader, and my brother over at the Bird Nest. Good morning. Hans, brilliant to see you back on the stream, mate. Hope you've been keeping well. Know you've been busy. Lovely Erica here, obviously, every week. Craigie boy as well. Nick just toppled for the first one into the room, leading his five-week leading streak always time to break those records again guys trader mum joe lovely to see you as well hopefully you haven't missed anyone as well uh, simon down there i'm julian welcome mate really great to see you and to everybody as well who obviously maybe doesn't have access to the chat or is possibly listening to this on the sneak while at work we're going to try a slightly new format today guys i am going to just try and really cover a lot of ground with you all right so look We've got the education series that I've run is available as a course on WAP through a membership at the Bird Nest. There's also tons and tons of free stuff for you all, right, which is available on our YouTube channel. You can just go on there, go on the live sessions, check out any of my live shows. The majority of my streams, especially on a Monday, I'm running over the very, very simple trading techniques that I use and have used for several years um, to make my way in the market. And really what I want to do is just look at kind of sharing some more actionable setups with you guys on a Monday, right? Looking at the market, looking at lots of different assets, telling you what my plays are, where I'm going to be looking to take trades. Um, so without really kind of jabbering on any more than I usually do, chat's open, let's crack on. Any questions, please ask anybody that's new to the channel, just ask that you're respectful. There's no silly questions, guys, all right? We're all here to help each other. Everybody's been at that same kind of learning stage. So let's crack on, all right? So what I've got up here is what I shared with our members last night, right, which is the daily review every day at the bird nest we release uh, from a different trader from crypto bird myself everybody through the team um a bitcoin report right just helps us stay in touch with the market give our kind of thoughts and processes on what we're looking at now i'm not going to go too much into the weekly time frame for those of you that don't know i'm much more of an intraday trader so the daily for me is really kind of a key level that i'm looking for so what i've got marked out here and we'll go on to the sort of lower time frame stuff here momentarily so uh, let me just see where have we got on here very quickly. Let's see if we can just pop this up. Right. So while they're on here, this these arrows here have been on there for the last couple of weeks, right? To show you the thinking around the system, the plan was that price was likely to draw back into here. Why? Because we've taken a form of external liquidity, right? Again, for those of you who don't know, please watch my videos or check out. You can find similar that you can find the original stuff on, say, uh, ICT's core content as well. But basically, this low here, when we take liquidity from a low or a high, there's an expectation for price to then draw to rebalance a gap, right? If we have one available. So when we took this low, it's an internal low, yes. It's not an intermediate term low, which I'll cover in a second, which is what you see with the ITH for intermediate term high or ITL for low. But the principle is this, right? That once price comes up and it takes a high or a low, like we did here, we took this high, price came back down to rebalance this gap, right? When we close through that gap, violating it, we then took liquidity from this low. The plan has been for price to draw back into this fair value gap, run liquidity below these relative equal lows. You see this low here and this low here, making them relatively equal. This very often is seen as a line of support um, by retail traders, and that's not a derogatory term in any way. But what it means is that these kind of areas here, and nobody says it better than someone I've learned so much from in this industry, Trader SZ, 
Uh, and no one says it better than him, but deviation, right? Meaning that we've swept liquidity from this low. What did we do? We climbed back in the range, yeah? And then we're now looking for expansion higher up. So why is that important in this theory? Well, and that's the reason we had the green line here as well, showing the dip below, price coming back inside and ultimately starting to progress higher. So I'm just going to get rid of these just so that they don't clog up the chart too much. It's just kind of showing you the kind of analysis that you can get. You can also get all of that free, right, guys? You don't have to necessarily even be a paid member. You can be in there, be in our public chat, get releases for the newsletter and the reports as well. So what I'm looking at here is now we're back in here. We've had this beautiful expansion. What else have we done that's of great interest to me is we've created this balanced price range, okay? So let me label that up as our BPR. Now, what is that? We can see we had the bearish gap here that's been filled by a bullish gap here, right? This area now we're looking to offer, uh, we're looking to it to offer support, right? This, we're then looking at this as a block, a building block that price can use to move higher. We'll look at a few more examples on the lower time frames as well. So henceforth, why we've been bullish. Now, I'm just going to delete this just to give it some, uh, just to, to give the screen some clarity as we move down to our four hour chart here. We're now looking at this area once again because price dipped into this and had a really strong reaction. Let's not forget that we want to monitor how price moves, right? So that's when we're looking at things and we're talking about something like displacement, for example, yeah? Then what we're looking for, a strong body candle showing us a lot of trading volume moving aggressively through particular levels. So with this in mind, on a daily scale, I've not really got anything here, right? Price is up. We'll look at this in a moment in terms of holding this four hour fair value gap. We have this high here, which is significant because it's a higher that's within a fair value gap. That makes it an intermediate term high. And we see these as key liquidity pools. That means we could see some kind of short term correction here or even a longer term correction. We don't know until we get it. But what I'm pretty confident of is that price is drawing towards this because looking at our kind of principle of, around liquidity theory is you know, there's no clean high in here for price to take liquidity from. If you're a large player involved in these markets, you need to sell to a lot of willing buyers, right? Where do those buyers reside? Well, the one thing that we know is that above old highs and below old lows are people's stop losses, right? Now, when you trigger a stop loss, you're triggering a market order, okay? So we trigger this stop loss up here, for example. Yeah, this one down here. What happens is that creates a lot of open orders on one side of the market that can be filled by other traders. And this is particularly appealing to large accounts, right? It doesn't take a lot to just kind of sit here and let's just do it with this example, right? If we look at any kind of clean highs that we have. Let me just make this bigger so that we can see it. So we're looking at this high over here, what happened when price ran this? See the long upside wicks, we start to ultimately get a rejection. Where does price then look for after that rejection? First thing is our gap, right, which we've got over here, which was our fair value gap. Then we can see also when we close below that, price invalidating that gap tells us it wants lower. Unfortunately, all delivered from the same candle. So if we were looking at this on a daily time frame, uh, it wouldn't have given us the chance to get involved. But what did it do? Came and took liquidity below this low, right? Now, when we had a reaction below this low, it wasn't just that low. It was these relative equal lows here as well. Look how strong that reaction is. Look how aggressively the buyers stepped in here, right? Ultimately, where's price then reaching for? Well, the people that bought down here need to sell at a higher price. Where do we find people at a higher price above the stop loss from people that were short down here, right? It's a nice, simple way to consider the kind of liquidity games played in the market. Now, what you'll notice, like I said earlier, when we look at closes as well, look how strong this close was. You'll hear me use that sometimes, the term strong close, right? Now, that's because there's so much volume in this candle within the body, yeah? Small wicks either side, which is fine, but ultimately price has made a really aggressive move higher. So when we have that move higher there, my expectation is to let price come back down to our line here to find support and push higher. Ultimately, what happened was price came down, couldn't get back below this line, but yet hadn't really made a convincing move back above the high that it made here until it swept liquidity and then we had a really strong reaction back down, right? Now, as we're talking about when we're looking at displacement, right, is where we have this low, look at the displacement below this, right? How aggressive this move down was. Now, ultimately, we took out this low and this low in the same move, right? 
but when you see moves like that, really high volume moves, I'm talking about the volume existing in the body of the candle, then the chances are here for me, if we're not seeing our um, bullish fair value gaps, like the one we had in here hold, and we're getting that strong displacement below, the chances are that the market is looking for lower prices, okay? That's why we had this area as a real key point of interest. These equal lows, it's just a really ready-made, this was an intermediate term low as well because it was within this fair value gap. These lows give us brilliant liquidity pools to target. So all we're doing is we're just taking this information nice and simple and we're decanting it down onto lower time frames. all right? By the way, guys, if I'm going too fast or anybody isn't with me, please do ask. Um, I can either point you to some material, we can either cover it quickly on the stream, um, yeah, or I'll tell you where it was on one of our other live shows. Now, for those that don't know, these uh, vertical lines coming down the charts are session breaks. You can add them to your chart by going on settings and then session breaks, which is in events. All right. They just help separate the days across. <laughs> Razor, it's a ball flag. Don't make it complicated. Exactly, right? Our boy Razor here. Sick little trader. I think actually as well, I think Razor's going to be on the show with me on Wednesday, which is going to be super cool. Going to teach you guys a lot about volume. You know, I talk about volume and I use it more in terms of the bodies and the candles and stuff like that. But I tell you this right now, this guy uses it to just makes it an art form. So as long as he doesn't, you know, give me too much crap between then now and then we'll, <laughs> we'll get him on the show on Wednesday. No, I'm joking, Razor. It's always a joy to have you on here, mate. So if I'm now going to just move down to my four hour chart, then what was of interest here? Well, from the report last night, we're expecting bullishness into the market this morning as long as we hold this, right? Here's our bullish four-hour fair value gap. Why is it important? Well, look here, right? We've got this gap. This is how the gap's created between this candle, this one, and this one. Price, like we said, when we come up and we run some form of liquidity, yeah? So what did we do here? We came out, we took out this higher, so we've taken external liquidity. We're now looking for internal. Now, we don't know as traders, or I certainly don't know, whether we're going to rebalance this and have a strong move higher, right? Or if we're going to take a deeper corrective move down to this. So what can I do to tell? Well, what I look for is if these candles had closed below, so we had a, not a big bearish candle, we'd close that below, invalidating this, that would then become an inverse fair value gap, which you'll see on my charts in purple, all right? And then FEGI for inverse. Then I would be expecting price to reach down for this, where the next sensible liquidity is resting, okay? However, what we can see really clearly here is that we didn't get that, right? What we got is the bodies respected this beautifully. And I love these little downside wicks. We get this little kind of pin bar with a short nose here, showing us that the market's stepping in. It's looking for expansion higher. Ultimately, what did we then do? Well, we've come and taken out this high. We've had a corrective move down. We've now rebalanced this fair value gap again. What I like to do with fair value gaps, and I had this question off of a student, a private student of mine recently, which is a brilliant question, um, is when you're looking at these FVGs, how do you know when they've been filled or not? Now, this again is talking purely, right, purely about how I use these, right? This theory or it originates from traditional technical analysis. I've done a lot of work um, with ICT, who I was really blessed to learn from, Trader SZ, who, you know, probably my biggest influence, but also just reading and absorbing so much information over the years. You know, I learned so much from Crypto Bear, his knowledge of the markets, especially legacy is insane. But, you know, there's a lot of similar principles, however you look at it, right? Now, basing it on this, when we're looking at liquidity theory, Game. Great question. Okay, mate. So a fair value gap for those of you that don't know is if we're looking at a three candle pattern. So this candle here. Just going to highlight that in green, guys. So oh, this one in green. So as we look at this here, right, what you'll notice is from, I'm going to mark the candles, right? So this is candle one. Do that in a brighter green. Yeah. This is candle two and this is candle three. Now, the gaps are what happen, right? We can see here from candle one's wick to candle three's wick. Yeah. We see this gap here. Let me just expand them along, right? So that's akin to what has created our gray box here. 
Now, the gap, that's inefficient price delivery, right? What you'll notice with these other candles, right? If we look at another three candle example here, right? So, just for example, say these two, two, three, right? These three candles here, there's no gap, right, between the top of that wick and the bottom of wick number three. Notice how this overlaps. What that is, is that's efficient price delivery. That's what your market makers want to see. You want efficiency. Uh, and efficiency is key. So our theory is that if you have those inefficient areas, those gaps, yeah? So yeah, very similar, like a liquidity void, right? It basically, it stops the pairing of orders, meaning that we gap in the market. What the market likes to do is come back and refill these, right? Here's another really good example, the gap between this wick and this wick here, right? So what happens here? See how the market comes back to rebalance these gaps? Now, the market's making a decision when it's in here, right? And that's, is price going to violate this gap and look for liquidity higher? Or is it going to hold this gap and continue with the main trend, yeah? So this is a bearish gap, meaning that while we're in here, we're looking for bearish trades, right? Now, if we get a bearish gap, like this one here, for example. Let me just zoom in for you. Yeah, so candle one, candle two, candle three. This is our bearish gap. So we're expecting price to reject it, which it does initially. But look when it violates, it closes above here, right? Meaning that our next target then becomes the closest swing higher, which is actually here. I'll do this a bit bigger and in red so it stands out. Yeah, so ultimately, look, we violate this here. This then goes from being a bearish fair value gap, right? to when it's gone in purple, it's inverse, meaning our expectation for this candle or following candles is expansion to take out at least this high, yeah? However, what we're then saying is, okay, well, how are we then still delivering from this? And what you'll notice here is like we were talking about and we'll look at on the lower time frame, is you get this here, support, 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 expansion, right? Now what we're looking at is we're saying, okay, overlaying those same principles here, Here's our bullish fair value gap. What happened? Offered support. Price moved to take out a high, right? We've now taken another high. Price has come back down to deliver from this again. So where's our initial or where's the first high that we can look at here? Well, we actually created this one. So we need to pay attention to that. And above that, we also have this one here. But remember, we're on the four hour chart at the moment. When we zoom out to the daily, we've got this important intermediate term high here. So I would be looking for the market to do something like this. If we were looking for bullish continuation to take these levels one at a time, ultimately working towards our ultimate goal, which is up there. All right. So I hope that makes sense, guys, um, and especially what it is with a gap. But like I say, if with anything like that, I think ICT is a fantastic source of information to go to for that. Um, so, you know, go and check that core content out or you can find that as well as I explain it on my different live shows. Uh, which are all available for free on the Birdnest YouTube channel. Um, B and C, I, I don't know, unfortunately, mate. Like I said, for me, what I'm looking at here is I'm trying to lay down a set of rules and parameters. At the moment, I, uh, I think price moves higher, right? What makes me change that thought process and focusing this on a four hour is if price does this. Price comes and gives us a bearish close below this fair value gap here, right? then my expectation is price to draw lower to here and ultimately then looking for the lows that exist down here, a lot of liquidity resting here, right? Untapped swing low, untapped swing low, untapped swing low, right? Those areas here provide really nice liquidity pools. So that's what we're looking for. So basically what I'm never trying to do is I'm not trying to ever impose my will on the market. I'm trying to read what the market is telling me and then I'm trying to jump on board with the institutional order flow. All right, mate. Um, so, where's it? Oh, God, I've missed one of Erica's comments, haven't I? Hang on. Still had a show with Milky about Chixi. Yeah, yeah I, I do. Actually, you're going to see, I haven't forgotten about this, right? Even though my memory is terrible. And obviously, I'm quite famous for it, as you can tell. Um, there's even more exciting stuff now. We're going to get Libsy on the show soon as well. Trader Libsy is just obviously it was a legend at the nest here, has gone on to do some amazing things as well. Got Razor on the show on Wednesday. Um, but, Milky and I 
Uh, and for those of you that don't know, Milky is our very, very talented fundamental analyst that works with us at the Bird Nest. We're going to have our own show. We're going to start coming to you guys, uh, trying to do something maybe every couple of weeks or that, really try and meld the ideas of um, fundamental analysis with technical analysis and give you some of these nice kind of um, altcoin gems that we can look at from a fundamental perspective, look at how we can get involved on a technical perspective and obviously give him a chance to talk about kind of the airdrops and farming and bits and pieces as well. So I definitely haven't forgotten, Erica, although you are my all-encompassing never-forgetting-alarm clock on stuff like that, for which I do owe a considerable amount, as I'm sure a lot of people <laughs> here will attest. Um, so a quick question here from Hans, and then we're going to dive into some other charts. Do you think the Evergrande liquidation here today will have an effect on the market? Last time the market dumped a lot as soon as the stock market opened. Yeah, so what's going to be really interesting to watch today is how New York responds to this information, right? So at half past one, uh, we'll be looking at the New York equity open. Now, well, I don't know if it's kind of psychological trauma from previous Evergrande, but the Evergrande news has been out there for a long time. And this typically gets wheeled out by Chinese press and into the Western media as it did previously. To several times it was weaponized in use, in my opinion, to affect market conditions, right? Um, and when they did it, they did it very successfully that we saw huge dumps followed by the price getting brought up a lot lower, followed by big pumps. Now, I'm not saying that's what we're going to get again, but markets do tend to get a little bit shrewd to this. So maybe it's something could be a little bit of a buy the rumor, sell the news situation. But yeah, I'm not sure. I'm going to look to see how the markets play out today. For those of you that know how I trade, I very rarely trade on a Monday anyway. I like to see the market conditions set up for the week, get our Monday high, Monday low, which kind of forms our Monday range. But it's definitely something that's on my mind. Yeah. So for those that don't know Evergrande, are, I think the world's largest property development company, multi-billion pound firm uh, based in China. They've had a lot of financing issues were being propped up by the government, which seems to have stopped now. It seems that the company's having to go into liquidation. There's a lot of people there, a lot of homes too. So they're very heavily in pot committed to that. So let's wait and see what we get in terms of that uh, news development. All right. But another really good spot from Hans. And I do always recommend everybody check out something like Financial Juice um or what's the other one as well some really really good ones out there actually one i was using recently um that i'll have a think of but basically they're news aggregators they'll tell you when the red folder news is out all right and that can really really play with the market so do make sure you're factoring that in as well things like your fomc um uh, earnings and bits and pieces which can make a big big difference so <clears throat> let me just go back down because i've missed a few Let's have a look. Keyshaw, is there a fair value gap below 25,000 as well? well? Let's zoom out very quickly and take a look, shall we? So, I mean, yeah, we would definitely have to have a little bit of a considerable drop below 25K, but no, what you've got down there is kind of a low down here. What I'd be looking at on the chart here are the kind of gaps that exist, you know, like, for example, where we had this reaction from here. You know, price very rarely just kind of reacts from the middle of nowhere, right? So there's our fair value gap here. Price again has rebalanced this, this, coming to this area here, found a strong reaction, violated this bearish one, showing us or giving us the indication that price is looking to move higher. All right. Um, yay, Libs. Yeah, what a, what a just legend. Lovely guy as well. And just lives in this beautiful snowy part of the world where I just always imagine him sledding with bears and just living the good life. Imran, very welcome, mate. Absolute legend, Imran. Yeah, manipulation at its best. Forex cat, Forex factory. Well done, Hans. That's the one. Really, really good. So for anybody that doesn't or anybody interested in kind of utilizing that, again, don't trade off the back of it, but take a look at it. If you've got FOMC minutes about to drop and, you know, Powell wants to come off with kind of a, you know, a, a hawkish tone, which typically is means bearish, then that, that does have huge effects on the market. I've seen the S&P 500 just obliterate itself through a Powell speech um but at the same vein you kind of use it to to then use to kind of add it to your confluence um no yeah do you know what this is going to be a great one for resume right when Ray's is on the show on Friday I'm going to show you what he's created which is just brilliant I'm going to look to factor it in I, I did use them previously I tend to kind of like to make things a little as clean as I can but yeah we'll absolutely look at them and Yakuza Khan and my friend hello right back at you so guys who's got some charts they want me to take a look at right we've got like 30 minutes left in the stream I can absolutely smash through some let me just go to a slightly lower time frame here on btc as well just so 
we can take a look at how we can kind of potentially action some of these setups as we come into our New York trading session. Let's clean up some of these bits here. Dot, yeah, sure. Let's take a look at that. Dot, always a good one to take a look at. So pop these and these. So, yeah, sure. And we absolutely can't. Yeah, SEI. This has been a really interesting one because our fundamental team have had us invest in SEI for a long time, which was an unbelievably good shout. Um, but something that's interesting I read the other day from one of our analysts is that there's um, there's something coming up at the moment. I'm not sure exactly what it is. They're saying just to kind of keep an eye on the fact that it could be due a little bit of a corrective move, which can also present really great buying opportunities, right? So let's look at what the technicals are telling us. Just for the shorter time frame traders among us here, um, <clears throat> at the moment, while we're rebalancing this FEG, something I like doing when we move into the New York session is either looking for where price is delivering from and where it can target, right? So, for example, I don't really trade weekends, but on Sunday, we had this nice clean move where we've set the high of day, price has come back down. Now, again, remember what I said before. If we see a gap like this one, yeah, our expectation as we come into the New York trading session, yeah, is for price to respect this and for us to move for higher prices, right, in the form of this high here and this high here. However, when we violate it, which we do here, yeah, that then becomes an inverse fair value gap, meaning that it's failed to support price. Then our expectation is for price to start seeking lows. Yeah, so we see we've got the close below it here. You then got from that moment there down just to this low. Yeah. Like, look at that. You got like a 200 point move, like 0.60%. So there's big moves that you can have in these in terms of scalping and day trading, right? And that's how we would look at it. The other side of it is looking for changes in our state of delivery, meaning that when we have a block of up close candles here, yeah, our expectation is the up close candles here, when we close below it, as we did with this candle. It then means that the following candle, we're looking for that to chase down our next point of liquidity, which is down here. Just to show you very quickly how that looks. What you would do here, see the red arrow symbolizes where it's go time. Yeah. What we're then looking for is for price to just simply within our session, come up and give us some kind of indication of a breakdown, meaning that we're looking for a low to be taken out with displacement. We want to be delivering from a fair value gap, which we're doing here. So we're bearish here. Just This is just an example, guys. We break down with displacement here. You could therefore enter a trade like we do with our breaker line system, which we teach, which would be this line here. Okay, basically almost like a breaker candle, which would be this low. Price runs up to here, finds rejection here off this order block, break down with displacement, limit order goes in here, stop loss above this higher. And then ultimately we would target this low down here. All right, so all we're doing is we're decanting our one hour down onto a five minute in this case, and then obviously for others as well, right? I'm not gonna go into that in too much detail today. Gonna to, just gonna really try and get through some charts so that we can look at some setups. So Solana, SEI, and yeah. Uh, oh, what's that one? Ash. What's that one game? A-S-T-R, A-S-T-R, okay. ASTR. Let's try and find that. All right. That gives us one here. Simon, seems on one hour we could retest 42K. Let's have a very quick look. So a really good way to look at, uh, uh, um, do, 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 what you say there, a fake out or a breakout there, Simon, is you can look at how price reacts when it reaches a key level. So this black line here is our key level, right? Now, this is actually a very aggressive example, but what we can see here is when we come up and price sets this initial high, or price has its first kind of foray in, how does price then react? We can see here, long upside wick, yeah? Price gets pushed back below the line, retests it, sells off, fine. So what we're then looking for is for price to sweep liquidity like it does here and get back above again. This turns out to be a deviation. This turns out to be a deviation. Price tries here, but then look how we get this strong close here. Notice the difference in the body of the candle and how much shorter the wick is. This is a really good thing to kind of look for, right? Because then what happens is we come and we put this gap in here. Yeah, that's our fair value gap. Within here, we can hunt our long setup. Happens to also be in line here. 
with our New York trading session, right? And then remember, we had this red line drawn previously from a higher time frame, meaning on the lower time frame, we can look for a setup in there that then allows us to make a move on that. Something like on the five minute or whatever tends to go quite well with a one hour um, as well. So, guys, let's have a look. Only came, oh, only came out five days ago on Binance. I think that's going to be a really difficult one to chart, Bruno. But let me have a look. Alt USDT, right? And we're going to we'll try and get these in. We've got a few more that we're going to go in for first. We've got 30 minutes left in the show. Uh, so we're going to keep it at the moment with Dot, Sol, SEI, ASTR, and Alt USDT. Well, no, actually, Sabal was in here in the middle as well, wasn't it? So let's take one of those. Let's go for O N D O as well. All right. Steve Etienne, my man, good to see you, brother. Good to see you. So we're just going to overlay these same principles now on these. And we're going to start with Dot, which was from our friend Hans. Let's have a look where we are. We're going to start with our daily. What have we got here? So Dot in a very similar place. Let me tell you immediately what I like about Dot here on the daily. These relative equal lows have been swept, same as what we had on BTC, right? Then what were we talking about before in terms of our gaps, right? This gap here, which would be our bearish FVG, we'll just draw that in as FVGD for daily. You're welcome, game. Um, so let's have a look at that. And fair value gap daily. Now, we've just had this close above it, right? And I do really like that. Really like the fact we've got the close above. So where could price be moving towards now? Well, remember, if we're looking for it moving towards liquidity, then we're looking at other fair value gaps and also highs as well. 6.5 is an important level for Seoul. Yeah, I agree with Hans there. So also a key psychological level, right? So if we just mark up 6.5 on the chart here, right, in and around here, what we're looking at here, you can see big breakthrough, support, support, price moves away aggressively, support again, support again. What's this? Is this our deviation, right? Is that the deviation below? Otherwise, why is price stepped back in here? And if it has, when it has stepped back in, why is it closed above that FVG? You know, for me, they're really, really bullish things. Now, when am I not bullish about this? Well, if price comes back down and fails this, yeah, gets back below it, then my expectation is for us to start looking for lower prices, all right? So on a daily sale, that's where we are. I think we push up towards here. We have this kind of cluster of highs here, which I'd be very aware of too. Uh, and just to kind of re-emphasize this, guys, when we see these balanced price ranges form, which we're doing a lighter purple, Remember, that's a bullish fair value gap close, yeah, with a bearish fair value gap, or a bearish fair value gap close with a bullish one, works either ways. But when you get those, look how well these then. So we expected this to act as support and price to move higher. It didn't. Why? Because we rejected within this fair value gap. Price then came back down and we think, right, think of it logically, right? Price, let me just make sure I do that in the right color. So look, price rejects here, no problem. While we're in here, we're looking short anyway. We then, when this closes, expect price at this point to do this. So it's gone from here to here. We then expect it to find support here and move higher. But it didn't, right? What happened? It closed below it here. So where do we target? Resting liquidity lower here, here, and here. Now we've got a reverse situation, right? So price has closed above this. So now what I want to do is start decanting down through lower time frames and saying, okay, well, what do I do? Just ape into a long here and expect this? That's not how I trade, right? I want to be looking at where these key highs and key lows are. Now, this is our high time frame draw, fine. But where we have these relative equal highs here, right? See how price comes up, dips into this and comes back down. But also, what have we done? We've taken out these highs, which are external liquidity, right? Meaning that we can then say, okay, well, we have an expectation for price to come to internal liquidity, right? Which is this FVG here. We haven't quite reached this yet. So now FEG H4, right? Now, this is sat within our daily fair value gap here as well. So we really, really nice and clean of price to take this liquidity here, slightly deeper correction into this, and then make a move up to that fair value gap. Now, do we have to get that? Absolutely not, right? Markets aren't often, like sometimes don't just work that clean. Here's another example here, right? We had this fair value gap, right? So we take out this high here, Price comes back down. Now, we could wait and wait and wait for it to get to here, but it never happens. So what we do is we monitor if we're holding strength here. We can look at what it is on a lower time frame. So if we move to, say, an hourly, 
yeah? Now we're saying, okay, well, what would give us conviction for price to go up here? Well, we, I know I sound like a broken old record, right? But at the moment, this fair value gap, yeah, this bearish H1 fair value gap is suppressing price, right? That's what's stopping price there. Now, as we move into our uh, into our trading session in the next hour uh, into New York, what would be lovely is to get this candle with a nice bullish close above, right? And then from there, we can start saying, okay, we've got our pre-made liquidity level here that just had a quick rejection of price. Is there anything else here? Are there any other gaps that could reject price? No, it's all beautifully balanced. So on a lower time frame, yeah, what I'd do here is drop down and look for, say, a uh, five minute, right? And then when price is closed above here and we're in, then I'd be looking for something like this, right? Price to sweep a low, break that high, and then give us a reason to go long, yeah? And when we see these sweeps of the low, what we're looking for in here is some kind of fair value gap that we can look to get involved with the price to draw into, yeah? Or we do what we described previously, and we're using something like our breaker line, right? We're taking that high, we wait for that strong close above, we set our limit order on the breaker line, stopped below the swing low, there's our liquidity target above, brilliant, all right? That's the kind of plays that I'm looking for, right? And that's the same across the board. So hopefully that's made sense where we are on dot. Do definitely agree with Hans, the key level told 6.5. Um, so now we're gonna move down to Solana, which is the next one on our list. Let's see where we are with Sol. Here we go. Right, so daily on Sol. No, you're very welcome, Hans. You got a good read on these markets, mate. It's always a pleasure to lock horns with you. Right, so Sol, here we are. Now, let's have a look here. And what's Sol doing? Now, a lot of these are going to look similar, right, guys? Now, while we didn't have relative equal lows down there, we've had a really nice sweep of a key level. Why is that super key and why the levels that are in there just... Always love them, so attractive. Down into our fair value gap, right? Price has dipped in. Look at that strong reaction. Now, this is a little, little bit more of an advanced thing of what we were just looking at, right? On dot. So this is a great example. So we got the balance price range here. Remember what I said? We've closed above it here. This originally we were looking at to reject price. We closed above it, so it becomes purple, meaning it's, a, a, sorry, it means that it's an inverse fair value gap. We don't have, ah, uh, we do have a fair value gap coming through it here, actually. So it did become a BPR. But just focus more on the fact that it's um, that it's an inverse fair value gap, meaning that it's failed. So now, really, on this time frame, can you see how price doesn't really have anywhere else to search for liquidity here? You know, you imagine if someone was short from up here. If I put the right thing on, wouldn't it? So if they were short from up here, right, and say whatever their targets are down there, then what you're looking for or for the stop losses that exist above here. When this person gets stopped out here, yeah, that's going to create a load of liquidity, right? That liquidity can all be bought up by larger accounts or by any accounts, right? So that's why we're looking at that as an idea of, okay, people are placing their stops above old highs, below old lows. They're areas of pre-made liquidity that we can target or that we expect other people to target. And all we want to do is jump on the right side of that order flow. Um, so now if I drop down, I think that's super clear on the daily. If I'm dropping this down to the four hour once again, uh, guys, I can see a few more requests for charts getting in. I don't think we're going to get time to put them in, but I am going to have a look and I am noting them down as well, right? So made a promise to cover dot, sol, SEI, ASTR, alt and ondo. But I do see your request there for UMA and ING guys as well, which I will check if we get time as well. Um, but also remember, we've got our alt request Wednesday coming up as well. So we can always jump in on that if we don't get to cover them today. So on the four hour, where are we at the moment? Is there anything really clear here on the four hour for me? No, I like the fact we've inversed this fair value gap. Um, and I'll tell you for why. So this was offering rejection here, it rejected price here came up into it here, popped above. We've come back down below it a little bit here, which is a little bit messy, but then this is crypto, right? Okay, you can get a little bit messy, but we do need to factor that in because it's not really overly valid at the moment in a similar kind of way that we kind of respected this here, yeah? 
So that's kind of holding price at the moment. That would be in grey. So I think I'd be using this as a little bit of a line in the sand, although I would take it with a pinch of salt. Why? Because purely because we kind of close below it a little bit there, but still, look, you can see the body's really respecting this. But if we get price closed below here, my first target is here. And then looking at this fair value gap between these candles there. Um, looking at this on a one hour, if you want to break it down in the way that it can be a little bit more, um, that it can be a little bit more granular, right? Then what we're looking for here is we're saying, okay, well, where's the key area this can find support? So at the moment, you know, it's probably still this four hour, really. There's nothing else really quite clean here. You know, as we're looking at this here, we've got these lows resting down here. I would probably, I would probably leave this one to the H4 just to be patient and to make sure that we get a good idea because you wouldn't want to front run this and say, oh, well, it looks a little like it could be weakening up at the moment because price loves to do things like this, right? And then just absolutely rock it. You see it start to drop down, start to encourage people to open short positions. I would definitely be waiting for some kind of confirmation below here and probably even taking out this low. If we kind of start closing down and not having any key reaction at this low, then realistically price should be reaching for liquidity below here. Uh, da, 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 da. Keyshaw, sorry, mate, I missed this. Which on bearish OB at the uh, oh, the last top is a rejection now. Can we say that? Oh, what was this on? Was that on Soul? Was it, mate? So, I mean, you've got a really big order block here at the top of Soul. These kind of consecutive candles here, you can always break it down onto a lower time frame, right? Like you've got something like this, for example. First of all makes it quite high probability here because we've got a really large, beautiful, bullish candle. Yeah, so if we're looking at this in terms of order blocks, I'd really like this one here. Why? Because it swept liquidity. So it took out a higher, that's, you know, support or, or resistance level for that. We had the deviation. We had strong move with displacement away from it. And look, retested it, sold off retested it again, sold off heavily again. You notice that was really good. And when you're looking for order blocks, look for high volume candles, right? Or a, or a collection of them. You ideally don't want them spanning too much of a huge range. Otherwise they kind of start to lose their purpose a little bit, all right? Um, but yeah, if you're talking about that one, mate, that is a really good solid OB. So when eventually price does get back to this, again, what you want to see is a nice strong close above it. This area turned resistance to support. And that's obviously normally a good indication that we're reaching higher for old historical levels there. OK, so that's thoughts on Solana. So SEI, let's have a look. Do we add that to this one here? We maybe have it down lower. Here we go. So, I mean, from since we've been kind of looking at this, look, really nice and simple, this fair value gap here. Again, see, look how it didn't get filled here when everybody's expecting it to, which is fine, but how price ultimately came back from it here, but still, yeah, still respected this fair value gap, right? This is actually a really, really good example here, SCI, because look, support, price moves higher to take out liquidity. Support, price moves higher to take out liquidity. Price then comes down into this, but look at the difference, right? So look at the body, look at the bottoms of these candles, yeah, compared to these. Now, yes, we have one long downside wick there, yeah? But ultimately, can you see how it comes down, shorter wick, and then the wick actually goes the other way, right? Whereas here, look, long downside, long downside, long downside, long downside, long downside, long downside, and look where the turning of the tide happened. You can see the absorption coming both ways here, yeah? So you're getting these kind of, ultimately, this doji candle here kind of really highlights it. But then you see the point that the long upside wicks stop, and then the downside wicks take over, right? You then get this nice bullish pin bar candle and then we get the expansion to take out the highs. So it's always worth really keeping an eye on the candle as well, guys. And like I was talking about before, we're looking for bullish trade setups when we're rebalancing this, there's no close below. When we get the close below here, this is when this becomes an inverse fair value gap, right? And when it becomes time to say, okay, well actually we got the close below here. The only thing with this one, which makes it a little bit unclear at the moment is, when we did get that close below, we also took out the local low, right? So as we continue to show weakness in here, we have to favor short setups lower. That low is now invalid because it's been taken. So we now move down towards this low. 
And I really like this low down here. I'm not saying we're going to come this low, but that is an intermediate term low, which you'll see on my charts as ITL, because it's also it's within a fair value gap, right? Meaning that they can be really, really good liquidity pools. So if we violate this, close below this, then I'd expect price to come down a bit lower. However, if we reclaim this now and get back above the bullish close, that's when I'd be saying, okay, maybe we've got the opportunity now to start taking on some of these highs up here, okay? So let's just drop this to a four hour as well so we can have a very quick look at that. We can see how price has just struggled to kind of get above this level here. So now for me, really, I think what I'd like to see is I'd like to see some strength here. That often comes in the shape of liquidity being swept from this low here, maybe this low here. So see price do something like this, get back in, yeah, and then give us an opportunity within here. Um, this, again, would be looking at this on an intraday basis. Uh, I wouldn't be looking to take that at the moment because we're still within the confines of this, right? So again, if we violate these lows and hold below them, yeah, then I'd be using this area here to look for shorts down here and ultimately down to here, all right? I really want to let the market show its hand, right, to show me what it's thinking about doing because at the moment it's kind of a little bit no man's land. Um, so with that in consideration, we can see we're... You know, this backs up our theory here, really, in terms of this rejection that we're getting from this. Again, it's not 100% clean just because we've had that slight close above. But then you could make the argument that we've got a very strong order block here. All right, price has set this order block, come away aggressively, taken a low, rejected at it again here, come back down, rejected now a second time. Um, so at the moment, I have to be leaning kind of intraday bearish on this. But we can see, obviously, as we go back to the high time frame, we've got really, really clear levels below us to target. But price gets back above and uses this as support again. And I think we start making a move on these relative equal highs above. So that's dot sol SEI ASTR. Somebody asked us for, didn't they? Let's have a look. ASTR USD. There we go. We've got a perpetuals contact. We do indeed. Let's have a look where we are. Let's go with our fam over at Binance on this one, shall we? <whistles> Boom. Big old scam wick there. What have we got? A-S-T-R. Okay, well, I mean, this, is, this really is in the habit, this one. of You don't really see this kind of analysis from me much, but... A lot more kind of traditional analysis here but this thing just loves these rounded bottoms right and then these big fly-offs here um so we can see that this has had some really really kind of good backing behind it recently again if you ever just look back at these charts right the amount of times that these kind of key bottoms and tops are made up with the inversions of fair value gaps really key fair value gap here right inverts support support platform to make a big move higher Same with this one here. Bang, inverts, closes above, test, support, pop. Um, and you see the same with tops, right? So that's why we want to also be conscious of that as we look up here and say to ourselves, well, are the bullish ones being respected at the moment? And absolutely they are. Yeah, there was our daily bullish fair value gap there. Respected, price moving up higher. This bearish one here, which was closed above. So, you know, market conditions allowing it makes sense to me that that's an ultimate target up here or immediate <clears throat> relative to the daily time frame and then looking at that one there as well so if we move down now to a four hour <laughs> that was a perfect c cut wasn't it well proportioned firm trading so Mm -hmm. little gap there although price action is quite clean one thing i don't like about this from a bullish perspective is this this inversion right um so i think simple for me here actually i think i think we move to take on lower liquidity here unless we close above this on the four hour if we close above this on the four hour then i think we've got these highs here immediately obviously this 
this, right? But the longer that we kind of hold below this, we get a move like this, for example, actually, delete that, I don't expect to get out that high, but something like this, a sweep into this, set a low, right? Then I would think we start coming back below this, then this is where we'd be looking for our short setup, right? First targeting this, then targeting, obviously not that ridiculous, line, then targeting these, and then this intermediate term low down here. But I think a good close above here, you know, good solid body, I think we make a chase on these levels and ultimately then look to go further. I think this thing looks quite good on the high time frame. Um, just as we move down to the four hour here, it's just this level here. So you can see now we're about 40 minutes away from stepping into a New York trading session. So as we look to get into here, we could see some good, as Stevie Boy puts it, some good bounce energy heading into the market. Here. And if it does, it gives us the opportunity to get above here. And then, right, remember, you're not just going to blindly kind of go into these things, right? We're going to get ourselves down onto like a smaller time frame. Okay, like we would do here, for example, like when we had this reaction in here. Yeah, so we were patient. What does price do? Here's our trading session for New York. So this is half past one. Yeah, 40 minutes from now. Like we said, we want to see inducement. See this level get swept. Look at the bodies respecting that, right? And then what we're saying to ourselves is, okay, do we have a break in the move with displacement? However long you're sitting up and you're putting yourself in these positions of taking these positions on where you're putting your, what you're considering as your key highs and lows here, right? Somebody else, for example, would be happy to consider this. However you trade this, right? What you want to see in these moves through these levels for me, I do like seeing an inverse fair value gap. I can't lie. Just gives me that extra conviction. Look how it's used to support here. That would give me more conviction to enter a trade here. Stops below the local swing low, or you can be even more risk averse and put it down there. And then ultimately, you're just looking up here and you're looking for the clear and obvious targets. And what I love about this is we've got our high of day over here. If we put on our kill zones as well, we can see as Asia's higher. So that was a really lovely trade up to there. And what I would do is when we get to the kind of internal highs, if you don't have anything clear and obvious, you can use your standard deviations on the displacement leg, which is this. And then I really like kind of targeting 2.5 on there, which actually equates to these equal highs. If you see that on the chart, then what I do is I'd look to move my stop loss to entry there. I'd hold runners for our four, yeah, or higher, maybe higher previous day, maybe not that higher. Um, but I do cover that in previous sessions. Again, if you'd like me to cover that in more detail, be happy to release a short video about it. But um, the, the idea and the principles all remain the same with my trading, right? That we're in a high time frame level here that until we violate this, we're looking for long setups. What do we want to do to find the long setup? We want to find something that looks like this, right? Whether you're taking this high or we'll keep it as this one, because I know other people prefer to kind of use that. So we see the purge below the low, yeah? Remembering this is also our breaker candle here. So when this really pumps up above, yeah, we see displays. Look at the candles, right? I know I sound like a broken record, guys, with this, but look at the candles. Do these candles look like they want to go lower than this low? And just start overlaying the really, really key principles we talk about. Where's price delivering from? I'm going to do this in green just to really emphasize it. Green is here, right? That's a bullish fair value gap. What happens? We dip into that. We take liquidity from below that low. This is go time, right? You see the white body candles are going bigger, bigger, bigger. And then we get boom, 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 big expansion, right? So then we can be a buyer in here, whether we're using that line, whether we're using a pullback to the fair value gap, you know, however you want to take your entry methods. Or you're taking an aggressive position down here when we inverse this fair value gap and show it respect over here, looking for that expansion, all right? And that's exactly what we're going to do if we get the setups like we looked at today, yeah? While we're, while we're rejecting from this, this is bearish, right? So while we're rejecting from, yeah? our inverse fair value gap, then if we get that bearish set up in here, we trade that lower. If we close above it here at a four hour close, not a five minute or 15 minute or one minute, you have to get the close of the same time frame that you've got the gap, yeah? Then we close above here, then we start making moves for these highs, all right? That's where I am on ASTR. What's the other one? Alt, alt USDT, let's have a look. We've got a perpetuals contract for this as well. Uh, da, 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 da. APT, no, ALT, no, spot index. Okay, so let's have a look. ALT. 
Wow, yeah, this really is new, this one. Um, okay, so from a technical standpoint, there's not tons I can do on this one, guys. Uh, <laughs> um, so, game, sorry, mate. I just um, I just saw your thing on there. Yeah, it was a nice position then from ASTR um, from back then. So just, you know, just remember, just keep your, you know, manage your money. Don't be afraid to take profits higher up. People sit, I know so many people and see it all the time. People sitting there waiting, thinking, God, you know, but if I cash out now, I could get higher. But then, you know, the market can turn so quickly in this game. So never be afraid to take profits and move your stop up as you go. You can always get back in uh, lower down or even higher up sometimes, right? Um, right, so let's just take a quick look. So ALT, if we're looking at this, to be honest, our four hours looking fairly well structured at the moment. That's one thing that we want to look at. We had this very thin bullish gap here. I'll go back to doing these in grey so it doesn't confuse people. Um, again, holding this very thin bullish gap here as well, right? So once again, on the H4, a close below here. Right, bearish close below here. I think that we make our way lower. I think I'd be looking at these ones here as well. Right, that within a fair value gap as well. So that becomes an intermediate term low. Beautiful. So close below here. I think we chase down this. Longer that we hold this, then I think our key liquidity, so our target for the upside is here. Moving this down onto a one hour. No, we don't really have much game here on the one hour. Do we remember? Always ask yourself where price is delivering from. At the moment, it's delivering bearish, right? So, you know, if you're not a respecter of kill zones, for example, they're specific trading times. We're looking for high injection of volume of volatility to the markets. Um, then again, this becomes really simple on the hourly, right? So we same kind of principle here. We're currently rejecting, so we have to look for short setups. Here's our key target. We do get a nice bullish close above here. And the caveat to that is that it doesn't run this. Yeah, it can run all the way up into that. We don't want to see that. We want to see it close above here. And then on a lower time frame, right, we look for that little pullback to take liquidity, a move above to show us impetus, and then we'd be looking to long into that high there. Um, let's have a look what else we've got. So that's all. We're now on to Omdo. Ah, I can see Trader Guru is in here as well asking for Omdo. Yeah, somebody else asked previously as well. Maybe it was you, mate. Yeah, have not forgotten you. Um, let's have a look at Omdo. Do, 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 do. Ah, perpetual contract on Omdo as well. That's what we like to see. We are partners over at Binance. Let's go, just zoom out to the daily. Frank, my man, yeah, I've absolutely got it on there. I think, you know what, I'm just going to be able to squeeze that. We'll do one more, so we'll squeeze in INJ. Somebody else asked for that as well. Another great show you come back full of energy. Awesome, Craigie boy. Just want to get a lot more on the deck for you guys, yeah? So thank you as always, my brother. Enjoy your tea and another hard day of work, and I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday, all right? Um, Erica as well, that's it, people flooding off. And we'll just get ourselves... Um, through this one and then have a quick look at INJ for Frank and somebody else that answered that as well. But everybody that's got to go back to work, really do appreciate your time. We'll try and keep these within an hour next time if I can. Pro Jal Roy, is the kill zone say yes, they are absolutely, um, mate. So yeah, the, the kill zones that you want for cryptocurrency are the same as indices, yeah. So for me, where I put them in UTC time, they're starting at 1.30 in the afternoon UTC, which is the New York AM kill zone as well. There's a brilliant kill zone indicator, a free one you can get from this chap called Josh Yu. Never had the pleasure of meeting them and have no association with them, but their kill zone indicator is excellent. And it's already pre-set up, so it adjusts for your specific time zone as well, which is really, really handy. Um, yeah, you're welcome, guys. So let's quickly wrap this up in the next couple of minutes, shall we? Let's do a real speed round. Omdo, right? Okay, so obviously new coin in the house here. We're kind of looking at how this is reacting currently. Really going to focus on Erica's favorite word, which is recency. All right, so price is now delivering from this bullish FVG. I'm super interested in that. Where do I become less interested in it? I'm less interested in bullish plays if we close below this. Yeah, so again, similar kind of principle. If we get the close below this on the daily scale, right, then I'm in here looking for intraday shorts down to these lows, okay? If we hold this level and whilst we're within this, then I'm looking for higher 
prices. Okay, let's count this down to our four hour now and see if that agrees with us. Because what we want is we just really want, <laughs> I saw that, Erica. We really want our time frames to align, right? So again, holding a bullish one on the four hour, right? Let me just write in H4, so that's clear on there. So we've got the hourly, we've got the four hour overlay, and it's like, okay, all of a sudden we can see that we're holding these arrays. So I've got a very thin fair value gap here and a very thin one here. So I know I can run this up to slightly higher levels. Now I'm going to go down first to an hourly very quickly. I like to see something on the hourly that gives me um, just a bit of an indication that price is ready to move. So what's capping the market, right? SZ, always used to go on about that. I used to love hearing him saying that. This is what's capping the market. Think about it. And the way that he would say it, it all seems so obvious. For me, it's this fair value gap. We've taken liquidity from this low, which is rebalancing this, making it an intermediate term low. Good, good liquidity pull on the hourly. We've done the same as we've gone into here. Now we've got above this fair value gap here, but this is capping it. If I want to see more upside here and for these to really pay off, I want to see price come above here, yeah? And then I'm going to look to play this higher, all right? I want to see a close above here on the hourly. I'll then jump down to say like a five minute, look at one of those setups we covered on the trade earlier and really look to aggressively trade this higher. We do want to be aware of this here, which really kind of had quite a strong rejection on price, but there's going to be enough within here and here for us to get some kind of, yeah, I mean, you've got 2.28%. We only need 20%, 30% of that to get a day trade in, right? So hourly close above here, play into here, hourly close above here. And I think this goes a lot, lot higher, all right? So then let's just finish up on ING, ING, INJ, injective. Uh, hang on, I'm losing my mind today, am I? There we go. Pop onto the perp contract for our futures. And what have we got here? So one thing to be cautious of here with INJ is that we're currently delivering from this bearish fair value gap. One thing that might give people a bit of confidence here with this is, I know it's not clean, but these kind of highs are relative equal highs. We haven't closed above this yet, so should we get a daily close above those? Yeah, and above those, so it'd be a daily close, should be a white candle, I do it in green because obviously white wouldn't really show up on this. Then the next key liquidity pool is all the way up here, right? So that could be a really, really nice one to look at if we get that close above. However, whilst we're within this, we have to be considered bearish, okay? So we're looking for short-term rejections. Does the four-hour overlay with our principal here? Yeah, four-hour, you know, is kind of consolidating, but it's consistently setting higher highs as we can just see by this run underneath here. Yeah, higher highs, higher highs, higher highs, higher highs, higher highs. But we've started to set a lower high here, right? So we want to see this move compressing in. There's nothing overly clean on that one, so I'm going to drop down another time frame to here. Okay, this is interesting here. So we didn't, let's have a look. So this, which we expected to reject price, actually become a balanced price range when we got above it here. However, we obviously run into this higher time frame gap here, which is why we have to consider and give bigger weight to the higher the time frame. Now, what we notice here is as we come back up, we're kind of still holding this at the moment. And for the keen eyed among you, we have a very a sliver, which I'll just do in green to make it stand out more, of a bullish fair value gap that's just by the skin of its teeth kind of holding price here. I think moving into Moving into our New York session, I think what I would like to see here, let's have a look. Yeah, I think to be super safe here, I'd just like to see price close above this. This is a bearish fair value gap currently. I'll just do that at a slightly darker shade of gray. Now, if we can get price in the New York session to have a strong move above this, then on the low time frame again, I think we go in looking for our pattern here. It's first of all, to this high, which is where we take uh, profit, right? And then we would look to move our stops to entry. Uh, that's just so that we can be a bit more risk averse here, right? Because we're in a situation where it's slightly unclear, you know, we're delivering from this, but we're delivering up into this. So we're going to want to move our stops and be quite nimble in terms of taking profit. And, you know, if we take a little bit of profit at this high here, move our stop loss up and price comes down and sweeps out our stop loss, fair enough. If it still makes this move afterwards, then 
don't fret because quite often the market will give you another opportunity to get involved when we look at our fair value gaps, all right? So look, that is it from me today, guys. I hope it's been helpful kind of covering a few more assets and then ripping through that a bit quicker, kind of trying to harness my inner SZ a little bit with these because just think he covers so much quality information in a very short period of time and I do tend to waffle on a bit. So I hope it's been helpful for you guys. Um, obviously, if you have any questions or anything, if you go down, please do let me know. You can reach out to me on Twitter at BC underscore Richfield, okay? Or come and find me at The Nest. Don't forget to find out about our inverse prop desk launch where you can get involved. We're going to look to trade, change the life of 10 traders every single month that are going to be coming into our inverse prop desk where nobody's paying for anything or for any evaluations. The key is you come in, work with the team, uh, show us what you've got. And if you can trade it successfully, then there's an opportunity there to earn a full-time living direct from it. Frank, you're very welcome. Mate. It was great to have you on there. Simon, brilliant to see you. Yago, great to see you again, mate. Gio, my good friend, along with Nit and Hans and Erica, an absolute part of our hardcore old school Q, Q, Q? <laughs> crew who have been with me for years. Game, it was great to have you on here as well. Dine away, great to hear from you as well. Copa, very, very sorry on that one, brother. I will absolutely take a look at RLC for you on Wednesday. Projal, Roy, brilliant to see you on the stream, my friend. Yeah, with those kill zones, make sure you're aligning your cryptocurrency with your equity markets rather than with your currency markets. And if you're trading the regular uh, legacy, or obviously FX markets and equities, then do make sure you've got one eye on the news as well. Um, a lovely Erica, obviously, as well. Craigie Boy, who's had to pop back to work. Trader Guru, thank you for your input today. Imran Khan, brilliant to see you on there as well. Steve Etienne. Cashaw, brilliant to see you on there as well. Kugel as well. Steve Etienne again in there for the win. Have I missed anybody? Esculador, sorry, mate. I didn't see you come in there with Posey. I'll definitely take a look for you if you're around on Wednesday. Bruno, brilliant to see you on here as well. Sabal. Sambuca1977, Layla as well. Hopefully that was helpful on Solana or SEI. If you were around long enough, Yakuza Kana. Brilliant to see you on there as well, mate. Whack as well. Another one. B and C. Brilliant to see you up there. Razor, Tammy. Uh, Julian as well, who was honest with at the beginning of the stream. Hope I haven't missed anybody out other than, uh, ah, Trader Mum Joe. There she was right there at the beginning. And Trader Jimmy, who popped in as well. Have a fantastic week ahead, everyone. Have a really, really big week. Um, and stay in touch. Going to be very, very active on Twitter. We're going to be doing some live trading sessions with our members of the Nest this week as well, with a focus on the NASDAQ and also on Ethereum. And yeah, I'll be back Wednesday live with you legends as well and look forward to some special streams coming up where I think we're going to have Razor on as a guest. Have a fantastic week, guys. Stay in touch with the markets. All right, do reach out if you've got any questions. I look forward to seeing you all on Wednesday. <laughs>